Oko sawa, na potabasamu. If you can't see people's teeth, they're not smiling. Somebody said, hey, Kamo jona meno ya mutu basi ya jatabasamu kwa hivyo. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling. Na njini watu wajabu muna no, tabasamu. Somebody said, I'm happy inside. Ibo ni mefra indani. Then you notify your face. Uh, ukisema unafra indani, basi yonyesha kwa uso inje. You update your Facebook. Alafu na update kwenye mtandao pale. If you're happy, Kamo unafra. Send the notification to your face because it doesn't hurt. It never hurt. Tuma pale, andika kwenye mtandao kwa unafra kweli. And don't get religious on me. Na usiwe mtu wa kidini kwangu hapa. I'm happy. Mimi niko na tindi kona furaha unavaa sura ya kazi. Amen. Ati ya amen. You're not happy. Hapana wewe huko furaha ukiwa hivyo. I'm very happy. Ati una furaha niko na furaha sana. Amen. Ati sawa. What do you think is a funeral? Wana fikiri mazishi kweli. I don't see any coffin here today. Mimi sijaona jeneza hapa leo. <laughs> We're not burying anybody. Atuziki mtu hapa leo. So this is not a funeral. Amen. Amina. Say this out loud. Say this is not a funeral. Nobody, nobody's dead. Hapa si mazishi hapa. Nobody's dead. Akuna liye kufa hapa leo. Somebody said, well, what is this? Eh, so mazishi basi ni nini? It's a celebration. Yeah, uh, hapa si mazishi ni mni kuna sherekea hapa. Of the goodness of God. Kwa jili ya wema wa mungu. It's the gospel. It's good news. Kwa mana injili ni habari njema. Good news makes you happy. Habari njema ina kufurahisha. Bad news makes you sad. Na habari mbaya pia nazo zina huzunisha. God is good. Mungu ni mwema. The devil is bad. Shetani ni mbaya. Amen. Amina. Joy is good. Furaha ni njema ni zuri. Laughter is good. Na kicheko pia ni kizuri. Depression is bad. Na kuganda mizwa ni kubaya. Amen. Amina. We're not serving depression here this afternoon. Apana atopeani hapa kugandamizwa mchana wa leo. That is being served somewhere else downtown. Labda ni sehemu nyingine mahali tofauti. So if you came here looking for depression you come to the wrong place. Kama ulikuja hapa ili ufinyiliwe basi wewe umekuja mahali kasoro. Amen. Amina. If you came here for good news you came to the right place. Kama ulikuja hapa kwa ajili ya habari njema basi umeingia mahali panapofaa. Amen. Amina. Turn to your neighbor say I came for good news. Mwambie na kumwambia jirani yako nimekujia habari njema mimi. Mwambie hivyo. And before the service ends. Na mwambie kabla ibada ishe. You will see my teeth. Utaona meno yangu, utaona meno yangu. Eh. Somebody just took out the teeth. Mtu tayari ameshaonyesha meno. And held them in their hands. Unajua. It's a joke. They didn't do it. It's just a joke. Ni ni mzaa tu, ni mzaa. Hala. <laughs> you know sometimes I entertain myself. Sangine huwa mimi najifurahisha mwenyewe tu. I learn to do that in the years in the ministry. Huwa nafanya hivyo kwa miaka nyingi katika huduma najifurahisha tu. Because if you um, if you stand where I stand look what I have to look at. Mhm. Mm kwa maana mimi labda maoni yako sijali sana lakini mimi anafanya kujifurahisha. You you have to entertain yourself. Amen. Lazima ujifunze kujibamba. Jana nasema hivyo. Unajifurahisha. Praise God. Amina. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you Jesus. Glory to Jesus. And you know God is a wonderful sense of humor. Mm -hmm. God has a wonderful sense of humor. Mungu pia ni mcheshi Mungu ana hali yake ya ucheshi Mungu. Cuz he made us. Kwa maana alitutengeneza, tuumba. And if you don't believe God has a sense of humor. Wewe kama uamini Mungu ako na hali yake ya ucheshi. When you wake up in the morning. Ukiamka asubuhi. Just look at yourself in the mirror. Wewe bujiangalie kwa kioo kidogo. And you realize Utashangaa. <laughs> he, he, he has a great sense. Utasema kweli Mungu ana hali yake ya ucheshi kweli. Amen. Mm -hmm. People in the world, everybody wants to be somebody else. Kila mtu anataka kuwa kama mtu mwingine duniani hii. In America. Kule Amerikani. Always, they always changing their face. Hata mauso wanabadilisha nyuso zao. They get big lips. Mtu anaweka midomo mikubwa. Then they make their face. Anafanya fanya mageuzo. You don't even know who this person is. Hata hata ujui ni nani sasa huyu. And then they can't smile because they got all the botox. Sasa kwa sababu wamegeuza uso hata kutabasamu inakuwa ni shida. And they've lifted their face so many times. Na unyuso wamegeuza mara nyingi. If they ever get about around any fire they will melt. Wakipita mahali kuna moto tu hiyo joto inayeyusha. Walichoji, walichopaka. I, tell, I tell people just be happy who you are. Wanaambia watu wewe kuwa na furaha jinsi ulivyo uko sawa. When I was a, when I was a little boy, mm. 
When I was a little boy, other kids said, you have a big nose. I, I breathe more air than you do. You will have shortness of breath and I have more air than you do. Amen. Some people, they don't like their ears. In America, everybody wants to get a tan. Uh-huh. They want to go darker. They want to go get tan. And you come to everybody, Africa, everybody's trying to get light. Mm. Like what? Unashanga, Just kam- be happy. Lazimu wena fra. When I first arrived in America, Kule they said, where are you from? Metoka wapu I said, I'm from Africa. Metoka Africa mimi. They said, you don't look like an African. Sema, wow, kai kama I said, I'm, a, I'm an African. Mbe, mini, Africa, na well, how come you, your, your shade is so light? Na mbona umgozi yako, I iko said, hivyo. ask God, that's where he put me. Na wambia, mulizeni mungu, huko ndiku aliniweka. God doesn't make mistakes. Mungu ye afanyi makosa makosa. Amen. Amina. But when you travel to 89 countries, in every country, I've been whatever they are. If I'm in Japan, I'm Japanese. If I'm in Korea, I'm Korean. And wherever I am, that's what I am. Amen. So I happen to be, I happen to be Kenyan today. Hey. And before the service, I will run around the track three times. No, I'm just teasing. I want you to, I want you to take your Bibles today, if you would, please. I want you to go with me to the book of Acts. And we're going to go look at chapter 19. Tutangalia kifungu cha kumi na tisa. And probably what would be good if I could bring this down there because I never stay up here. Mm-hmm. You can stand there. You can stay there. I'm, I'm a walk around. I've got to get my afternoon workout. Mm-hmm. Amina. That, that's the side to be right there. Hapo kuna watu kweli, hapo kuna watu wako sawa hapo. Something's happening over on that kuna side. Kuna kitu pale, wacha tuangalie kama wako kwa katikati wako sawa kama wale. So if you see me spending time over there, Asa you know what happened. Asa ukiona naenda enda kona ile ingine, pale kuna watu wamesisimuka, wamechangamuka. I'm going to go to whatever side response. Hmm. Amen. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Upon his sour. Amen. Acts chapter 19. Matendo kuminatisa. And before I get to the river today, Kabla ni katika mto leo, I want to uh, talk to you. Ningependa. About the power of the gospel. Nyonge kusunguvu za injili. Which we, we already saw this morning. Because the gospel actually flows like a river. What the devil always does is try to capture it and bottle it. Because he can make money off of it. That, that's what religion does. Dini huwa inafanya hivyo mazoya yake ndiyo hiyo. God, this thing's not gonna work. It's not gonna work, guys. Give me. A... Oh,
Testing one, two, okay. Ça va. That's a radio headset, and there's times it, it, it works back home, but yeah, it doesn't work. It, it, it doesn't know Swahili. Ni kama hiyo kipaza sauti haijui lugha ya Kiswahili inalemewa ikumbani imefika Kenya hapa. Amen. Amina. <laughs> so um, when Jesus came, basi kwa kati Yesu alikuja, he brought freedom. Alileta uhuru. He brought life. Akaleta uzima. And brought good news. Na akaleta pia habari njema. Man always wants to capture that. Wanadamu wakati wote angependa kunasa hilo. And you can see that actually happening on the Mount of Transfiguration. Katika mlima wa mgeuzo unaona tukio hilo. When Jesus was there. Wakati Yesu alikuwa pale. And, and Peter even said Lord it's good for us to be here. Hata Petro akasema ah yapendeza tuwe hapa Yesu. Let's build three denominations. Hebu tuende katika madhehebu tatu. One for you, one for me. Eh dini yako moja, nyingine yangu. Man always wants to put God in a box. Na mtu angependa wakati wote amuingize Mungu katika kisanduku. And God you can put him in a box. Hauwezi ukamuingiza Bwana kwenye kisanduku. You can put a line this is where you come that's how far and Uwezi chorea Mungu mpaka ungambia tukitembea utafika hapa pale bible comes and messes up everything. Ndio wamsho ukija unachafua kila kitu. And there's an up people. Na kuna watu ambao because people don't want to let go of the past. Watu wapendi kuachilia kale yao. Well that's the way we've done things for years. Unasema ah tumezoea tabia hiyo miaka nyingi. I've done things for years. Nimefanya pia vitu miaka nyingi. But we have to be spontaneous. Na lazima tuwe na hali ya kutembea na uupi wa sasa. Holy Spirit is spontaneous. Kwa maana Roho Mtakatifu ni wa hali ya sasa. Throughout the book of Acts it's the suddenness of God. Matendo ya mitume kiangalia kuna kazi za kipa. If everything is laid out. Kila kitu kioka pale bayana. I talk to ministers. I talk to ministers. Wanaongea na wahuduma wengi. And they say my calendar is booked for the next five years. Wananiambia I said wow. Nasema haya. The next five years? Miaka mitano. You booking yourself in a church that won't even exist five years from now. Basi wewe sasa unaweka kwenye kanisa ambalo halitakuwepo wakati huo ukifika. How do you know that church is going to be there? Unajuaje kanisa litakuwepo wakati huo? Think about what we just came through. Lockdowns, COVID-19. Hebu fikiria matukio ya juzi tu corona. Huge churches in America that are closed. Makanisa makubwa America yalifungwa. So if you were booked to speak there. Sasa basi kama ulikuwa umeambiwa utahubiri kule. I'm, I'm booked to speak at the big convocation there Ati. in January of 2023. Ati nangoja kuhubiri pale kwa mambo kubwa katika Januari 23 yeah. mwaka. Church doesn't exist. Hata kanisa hilo sasa. Halipo milango He, alifunga. He's in the Bahamas. Wako Bahamas. He's on the beach. Kule katika ukingo wa bahari. Alishaondoka. So you you have no clue what's going to happen. Sasa wewe hauna dokezo ya matukio. The Bible even says go, in the book of James go to now you that say today or tomorrow we'll go to such a place. Wewe ambao unasema leo kisha tutenda pale fulani enda sasa. We live there for a year, we'll sell, we buy, we get gain. Tesha hapo mwaka tuuze tufanye faida tu endelee. He said you don't know what your life is. Nasema ba ukiwa hivyo wewe unajua. Even a vapor that appears for a little time. Mhm. And then vanishes away. Inakuja muda mfupi afi inatoweka. But that you ought to say. Lakini unastahili kusema. If the Lord wills we should do this now. Bwana kama ni mapenzi yake tutafanya hiki sasa. So if we say God's going to shake Canada. Kenya. Kusema Mungu ataenda kutikisa Kenya kwa mfano. God help Canada. It's like pretty bad right now. If you how many know people in Canada? Mungu bwana anajua watu wa Canada. It's bad there right now. Ni ni mbaya sana pale hali si nzuri kule Canada. If God's going to shake Kenya. Ikiwa Mungu atatikisa Kenya. And we say we okay Lord if you're going to shake it you're going to do this that that. Na you mwambi, don't know what God's going to do. Ngwambie kama atafanya hivi na kile wewe hujui atafanya nini Mungu. You don't know what he's going to do. Hujui atafanya nini. You know that it's going to result in people being saved, healed, set free and delivered. Ndio kutakuwa na wokovu kwa mbona watu. The church is going to grow. Ndio kanisa litaongezeka. But you don't know how he's going to do it. Lakini haujui atafanya kwa njia gani. So if it's down to the structure of what we used to. Kama ni katika michakato ya matukio. We're going to just put God into the box. So ni unaingiza Mungu kwa sanduku tu. Starting at 7 will go we can do this. This will happen. That will happen. Alafu naweka ratiba saa moja ni hili, saa mbili hili, saa tatu tafanya hili, tatokea lile. What if you got up and the Holy Ghost blew the whole place under the power? Je, no, ukas, 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 nobody ukas, doing anything. Ukasema na ghafla na roho aachilie upepo wake na nguvu pale uko hakuna mtu ana kazi ya kufanya. Oh, we will never allow that. Oh. Ati hapana, tutakubalisha okay. hilo. So, so we won't allow that. 
atakubalisha hilo well then you can't say holy spirit come and do whatever you want to do basi ni makosa kusema basi roho mtakatifu atinjoe ufanye utakalo because you actually saying holy spirit come do what you want to do as long as it is beats my approval kwa maana wewe unaambia roho basi shuka ufanye utakalo bora iende sambamba na michakato yangu some will say but if i don't have it written on a paper then i'm get nervous ndio nasema ati kama sijaandika nakala zangu ninaogopa naingia wasiwasi Whose problem is that? Asaiyo shida na nani hiyo? Somebody said, "Well, let's see on the paper where what we what do we do next?" Sasa tuangalie kuangalia karatasi sasa tutafanya nini? Follow the Holy Ghost. Unaangalia ratiba hapa na mfuata Roho Mtakatifu. Well, I don't know how to follow the Holy Ghost. Mhm, atijui kufuata Roho Mtakatifu. Ah. That's why we got to teach people how to follow the Holy Ghost. Tunafaa tufunze watu jinsi ya kumfuata Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. Amina. And that takes time. Na hiyo ina gharimu muda. Jesus said my sheep know my voice. Yesu akasema kondo wangu ujua sauti yangu. The voice of a Sauti ya mgeni hawafuati. And just because there's a microphone doesn't mean to say somebody needs to get it. Eh, na kwa maana kuna kipaza sauti imaanishi mtu yote tu anaweza kuchukua kipaza sauti hicho. And just because there's a microphone doesn't mean to say that that you have to get the microphone. Ni maanishi kwamba tuko na kipaza sauti pale mbele basi ni sharti uchukue hiyo aanze kuhubiri. Everybody's just staring at me right now. Na wale wana niangalia saa hii. Now you might not know this. Waweza kuwa ukose kujua hili. But our ministry paid for this whole event. Lakini huduma yetu ililipia. Mkutano hii yote kabisa. Everything we paid. Everything. Ki, tumelipia kila kitu. So if anybody should be saying anything it should be me. Yote ambaye anafaa kuwa anaongea si mimi. I paid for this. Bana ni mzini nimelipia. If you want to speak you pay for the whole thing. Ukitaka no kuongea basi wewe unilipia. I give you the microphone I go. Nitakupa mic na niende. I'll, I'll go look at the elephant. Nitaenda kuangalia ndovu kule. It's not a problem. Si shida hiyo. Cuz everybody wants anybody else's microphone. Kila mtu anataka kipaza sauti ya mtu mwingine ambao ni yake. Go get your own stadium. Wewe chukua uga yako mwenyewe. Go get your own meeting. Endo chukua mkutano wako. Go book your own meeting and you have your own service. Na uwe na ibada yako kwa mkutano wako kwenye uga wako. God send me here with a message. Mungu kanituma hapa na ujumbe. I've only got two days. Na niko na siku mbili tu. I came to deliver it. Nimekuja kuwapea na ujumbe. I'm going to deliver it. Na nitawasilisha ujumbe huo. Hey. Some people might not be too happy. I don't care. Labda wengine hawafurahi sana. We gonna see Kenya shaken by the hand of God. Labda tuone Kenya ikitoa nguvu zake Mungu. Now, somebody said, well, if you don't do exactly, you will never be invited back. Unasema oh, basi usipofanya tunataka, wewe utawahi alikuwa tena Kenya. I've never been here in 43 years. Mimi sijawahi kuja hapa miaka 43. The world is a big place. Ulimwengu ni uwanja mkubwa. There's many countries still waiting for me Kuna to come. Kuna mataifa mengi yananingojea bado. I've got no time to waste this. We have limited time. Mimi sina saa ya kuharibu. Tuna wakati mfupi sana. Amen. Amina. So it, I'm not mean because I don't know anybody here so it's not like to take it personal. Masaki uchukulie ubinafsi nilichosema. I'm just saying I came here with a mission. Nimesema tu nimekuja hapa. And by tomorrow night if I haven't done it then I failed. Na jukumu na kesho kama nitakuwa sijamaliza nitakuwa nimeanguka. I'll go home and tell our church. Nitaniambia kanisa langu nyumbani. We spent 350,000 dollars on Kenya. Tulitumia dola 1350 kwa ajili ya Kenya. Please forgive me as your pastor can make a run for the door right now while na, you can. Na kama watu hawapendi kimbilia mlangoni wewe chomoka mapema wakati wako ulipo. This is not a game. Kwa maana hapa tufanye mchezo. The whole future of Kenya depends upon this breakthrough. Siku za usoni za Kenya zinategemea upenyo huu. Listen to me carefully. The whole future even of your churches depend upon the breakthrough. Nisikie kwa makini. Siku za usoni hata za kanisa lako lategemea upenyo ulio hapa. Everything in the world is changing with rapid pace. Kila kitu ulimwengu kinabadilika kwa mwendo wa kasi sana. And there are people that are not happy with what God's doing in Kenya. Na kuna watu wafurahi kile Mungu anafanya Kenya. They're not happy with the president and the first lady. Hawafurahi rais na pia mama wa taifa mstahiki. And they would like to make some changes. Na wangependa kufanya mabadiliko hapa na pale. But I declare it right now. Na tangaza sasa fail watashindwa every attack against kenya will fail kila uvamizi dhidi ya kenya hautafanikiwa and if there are people that are around the president and first lady na kama kuna watu ambao wamezunguka mama wa taifa na rais ambao hawafai kwa god move them out naomba mungu akawaongoze away from them awatoke pale na pray supernatural protection na naomba ulinzi wa kiungo kwa rais na mama wa taifa mstahiki the plan of god will not be stopped mpango wa mungu hautazuiliwa the plan of heaven will not be stopped for this land mpango wa mungu amen amina have you found acts chapter 19 je umepata matendo mitume 
if you haven't just look on with the person next to you. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples. Everywhere you travel. Kila mali unaposafiri you will find certain disciples utapata wanafunzi fulani but that's all they are lakini ndivyo alivyo certain disciples ni wanafunzi tu fulani <laughs> hey <laughs> he said to them akawaambia have you received the holy ghost since you believed je mlipokea roho mtakatifu tangu mlipoamini they said we haven't heard that there is a holy ghost wakajibu la hata kusikia kwamba kuna roho mtakatifu hatuta hatujasikia we have travel even in america hata naposafiri hata kule america these people they don't they don't even know that there is a holy spirit ha watu hata waji kama roho mtakatifu yupo they think the holy spirit is a dove wanafikiria roho mtakatifu ni njiwa he's not a dove roho si njiwa he's like a dove yeye ni kama njiwa we were in a meeting kwa mkutano fulani it was like this and a bird a dove flew in mkutano kama una njiwa ghafla akaingia kwa mkutano hallelujah watu wakaanza kusema oh i said no no hallelujah. it's just a bird it's not nikasema hapana huyo ni ndege tu they thought it was a holy spirit huyo si roho mtakatifu ni njiwa tu ni ndege walifikiria ni roho mtakatifu kaambia la ni ndege wa kawaida jiwa so people watu <laughs> They didn't, they didn't know that there is a holy spirit. Hawakujua kwamba kuna roho mtakatifu. Or they may be heard that when people get baptized in the holy spirit. Lado alisikia watu wanapobatizwa roho mtakatifu. They speak in tongues. Na wanaongea kwa lugha. So then they don't like that no I, I don't like the language. But the holy spirit is not a language. Ah mimi sipendi lugha. Roho anapeana lugha. He's not a language. Ana lugha yake. He's not a bird. Yes, si si ndege si jiwa. Yes, si jiwa, si ndege. Are you with me? Pamoja nami? He's God the Holy Ghost. Ni Mungu Roho Mtakatifu. And when he comes in he takes full control of your life. Na anapokuja achukulia usukani maisha yako makamilifu yote. And you get a language. Na unapata lugha. But that's to help you to pray. Ambayo inakusaidia kuomba. Because there many times you don't know how to pray like Ma- you should. Mara nyingi haujui kuomba jinsi kupasavyo. And the Holy Spirit prays through the perfect will of God. Na Roho anakuombea ndani yako kupitia mapenzi makamilifu ya Mungu. The devil hates it because he can't understand it. Shetani apendi kwa maana haelewi lugha. And the demons sit around they try to crack the mapepo ya karibia kuelewa lugha yako hiyo na inakuwa ni ni kisu moja moja mbingu wanashangaa unapongea kwa lugha unasema nini wewe wanaenda kichaa kwa maana hao hawaelewi when people speak in other tongues watu wanapongea kwa lugha mpya and then you build yourself up unajijenga mwenyewe like a generator eh kama generator unajijenga unajijenga you you feeling like We could just hold up a shot. Unaishi ni kama tu nguvu za ikia. You got generator. You una mm, una generator, una kwa generator. You just and you charging yourself. Na una unajitia nguvu mwenyewe. Eh, building up yourself. Ukijenga on your most holy faith. Katika imani yako takatifu, kiomba katika roho. But not just the language because many people have language. Si lugha tu kwa maana watu wengi wako na lugha. But they don't have power. Lakini hawana nguvu. And the holy spirit comes with Ro haji na lugha pekee anakuja na nguvu. receive power. Anasema mtapokea nguvu, nguvu. And that word power is dynamite. Neno hilo nguvu ni dynamis. Ni kilipuzi explosive power. Ni kilipuzi nguvu za kulipua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today God will give you explosive power. Leo Mungu atakupatia nguvu za kulipua za kilipuzi. There are people in the world Kuna watu duniani that put bombs on themselves. Ambao wanajiweka mabomu. Blow themselves up for their religion. Wanajilipua mahanga kwa ajili ya dini yao. People here today. Lakini watu wa Will have the Holy Ghost power in them. Watapokea nguvu za Mungu go everywhere. Watana kila mahali. And they will blow themselves up. Watajilipua lipua kila mahali. But not to anybody's detriment but to life eternal. Lakini kuingiza katika uzima wa milele. Hallelujah. And the devil will warn everybody about you. Na shetani ataonya kila mtu so kuhusu. Don't let them come there. Eh, hey, atawaambia msi. come there you're going to lose territory. Sikaribie pale huyo mtu. If you come there, ukienda pale, whatever we had going on is going to be broken. Kila macho tunaendeleza hapa kitakaribika. Those people are holy ghost people. Wale watu ni watu wa roho. Those people know how to pray. Wanajua kuomba. Those people have power. Wana nguvu. Those people are not ashamed. Hawaoni haya. Those people are not afraid. Hawaogopi. Those people will never bow. Hawatoi nama. They know their God. Wanajua 
those that know their God will do exploits in his name. I believe this field is full of people that are going to do exploits in his name. And I want to say this to many of the senior people of God. Don't, don't let the younger people say, you know, you need to take it easy. You you just, don't listen to them. They, young people talk rubbish. Don't listen to them. The Lord has prepared you for this hour. And the Bible says you will bring forth fruit in old age. And you will see more happen in the next 10 years than in the past 50 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. So don't let them write you off. Oh, you, you must take it easy. You know, you've worked so hard for God. Don't, you and mama just take it easy. <laughs> Go sit on the beach somewhere. Yeah. But there's still a fire on the inside. There's still a fire on the inside. No, there's another church you're going to build. There's something else you're going to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, let me get back to Acts 19. So they said, we've not even heard that there be a Holy Ghost. So he said, under what baptism were you baptized? They said, unto John's baptism. So Paul said, well, John verily baptized with baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized again, this time in the name of the Lord. Now watch this. When Paul, when Paul laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophecy. So there was a sign that took place where he went to put his hands on them. The Holy Ghost came on them. And then the things of the Spirit begin to be made manifest. Now, in the context of what we're looking at, this sounds great. Except in your church. <laughs> you know, uh, especially if it's new people. If people come in off the street. As you get saved. And now suddenly the Holy Spirit comes on them. And the people always wondering, like, calm down now, calm down. You know, I was also like you one day. And people always get, uh, young man, come over here. I've been in the way for 40 years. And, yeah, you've been in the way too long. You've blocked the way. Nobody can come through. So what you end up doing, you take the fire, you take the enthusiasm, and you calm it down. You can't, you can't do that. When somebody is freshly saved, you must, put, you must put purpose to it. That's what we did earlier today. You must go tell the world. Because if you put the fire out, all you're going to end up is a room full of religious people, and they sit and look at you every Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you go through the traditions. How many have an unspoken request? That's, that's why it's unanswered because it's unspoken. And some of the prayer requests you should never speak because they're not praying good prayers. Lord, kill my mother-in-law. Yeah. Who, is who has an unspoken request? So, I don't pray for unspoken requests. Because some people are not praying good prayers. Yeah. I want to find out what I'm praying for. All right, so yeah, the Bible says Paul laid hands upon them. And there were 12 people. Now, 
I, I love numbers because Napenda hesabu kwa sababu in, on the day of Pentecost was only 120 Siku ya Pentecost walikuwa 120 I thank God for the way churches are growing today with thousands and thousands Pentecost imekuwa leo kwa maelfu na maelfu But I'm coming down to a number here Lakini naja kwa hesabu hapa because these were 12 Hao walikuwa 12 It's very interesting Jesus picked 12 Ni kushangaza Yesu pia alichukua 12 He's got 12 Paulo hapa naye pia ana 12 Watu wamejaza kwa roho So you don't want a thousand Hawitaji watu elfu. You want to make sure you at least have 12. Angalau kuwa na 12. And they're all full of the Holy Ghost. Na wamejaza roho mtakatifu. So just like a car, you can check the petrol. Kama vile gari ukiangalia petroli, is full. Mafuta ikiwa imejaa. And you can see people they're empty. Unaweza angalia watu wako tupu. Lights always flashing. Mm, unapata ile taa inaonyesha. They on reserve. Unasema hao na mafuta yamekaribia kuisha. Of course everybody is a Tesla. Mm. Sasa kila mtu amenua gari ya Tesla. Batteries dead, you know. Eh, unjue Tesla nao pia beti zinaishanga. Uh, battery battery operated car. Eh, gari ambayo inatumia battery hiyo. You don't even know it's driving. Hata uji kama anaendesha. You can't even hear it. Hata uisikii kimwendo wake. So quiet. Imenyamaza. I like it when you Mimi napenda gari ikikuruma. I like, I, I like to hear that power. Na napenda kusikia mlio wa gari ikikuruma. Eh. Hey. And so uh, I I've got a I've got a truck that I drive. Akona gari fulani ako nayo. And we can carry a generator. Na unaweza beba pale generator. So that we can charge a Tesla if it's on the side of the road. Ile unaweza ku charge Tesla ikiwa imekwa mahapo. It's it's a gasoline car using a diesel generator to charge a battery operated car. Uh-huh. Because they want to save the planet. Wanapenda kuokoa dunia hii sayari dunia. That's the worst thing out. Ninakuambia ni jambo hata ni pendezi. Paris. Uh, enda, enda they have acres full of battery operated cars they can't even use. Wa kwa wameweka pale magari ambayo yatumia beti hata watumii. The whole so don't get me started on this stuff. Mm. Don't get me started. Cuz I got all the facts on it. Usinipate makosa najua mambo ni. Florida we have hurricanes. Kule kuna kuna the sea water comes in. Kuna zile dhuruba pale Florida. All the electric cars explode. Alafu zikija zile magari za za batteries zinalipuka zenyewe tu. The moment salt water gets on the battery it blows the thing up. Eh pakiingia hiyo maji ya chumvi inalipuka tu. So uh, somebody said yeah I got to plug it in every 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 place. I don't I don't plug my truck in. Mhm. I put gasoline. Eh yeah, naeka mafuta petroli kwa gari yake. Somebody said oh the world's running out of gas it's not. Nasema ati ati petroli. The earth has plenty of oil. Ati petroli inaisha duniani. The earth makes oil. Hapana. Oil is not a fossil fuel. Mafuta iko duniani inaisha. It doesn't come from dinosaurs. Aitoki katika wanyama hao. Oil is produced in the earth. Mafuta yanatoka kule kwenye dunia. Every 6 years my friends. Hebu kila miaka 6. Oh I didn't know that. Oh sikujua hiyo. You were never supposed to know that. Oh ustahili kujua hata hiyo. Because then they can restrict you. Kwa maana watakuzuilia. Are you with me? Pamoja nami. Oil is always leaking into the oceans. Eh, mafuta wakati ulikuwa baharini. Bakari baharini yipo kile. Some is pollution. No, the ocean neutralizes the oil. That's been happening for centuries. Bahari iko na njia yake ya kuvakisha mafuta iko sawa. Some won't tell you any of that. Na serikali itakwambia hivyo. It's all to manipulate and control. Watatu kukutawala hivi na mambo yao. The population just keeps going on to, into oblivion. Na watu wanaingia katika kutokujua. The fight in the world today is over oil. Mhm. Mm the yeah. same thing in Nigeria with the pipelines yeah. running up through Niger onto the Mediterranean. Nigeria, Nigeria cuts the electricity. Now Niger wants to fight for Nigeria. It's, it's all over oil. Yeah, the fight vita. in the church is over oil. Mm. They don't want the oil getting to the people. Okay. Because okay. if the oil gets to the people, okay. people are not going to be compliant to religion okay. and tradition. And the fire is combustible. Na, na and that fire will catch a hold and you won't be able to stop the move of God. Hey. Churches will spring Ma up everywhere. Inuka, inuka People will be man. worshiping Watana God. Watu. People will be running through the place. Kwa sifa. Well, we don't need to control them. We, we need to control, brother, calm down. Hey, wa waki no, wa wame people wame are watu. going to hell. We're not going to calm down. Tulia, chini, watu we, we're going to get fired up even more. It's called Holy Ghost and Fire Encounter. Mana roa pate mapatano, so if this is a Holy Ghost and Fire Encounter, Kama ni and I just talk and you don't have an encounter. Then we must scratch encounter off. Yeah, but I'm not sure about the fire. I know one church, they had the fire and they don't exist anymore. What, is, what does that even mean? On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell. A few days later, Two people dropped dead in the service. And it was over an offering. Hey. Hey. Ananias 
Anania. He comes down there. Akaja. Did you promise to give so much? Alikuwa yeah. ameahidi kutoa pesa kiasi fulani. He's dead. Akaanguka akafa. They don't even stop the service. Hata ibada yuko malizika wale. The deacons they come they carry him out. They wa, take a spade, wa, they bury him out. Wakachukua maasha wakamzika hata bila kamati ya mazishi. 3 hours later. Masaa matatu baadaye. Nobody called us at Safira. Don't come. Don't come. Safira hakuambiwa usikuje ni kubaya. Don't come your husband. Safira usikuje ni kubaya. No one wonder. Mume wako ameshaa. Nobody told her. Moka kuna aliyemwambia. 3 hours later she come. Masaa tatu baadaye Safira kaja. You promise this. Wewe si uliahidi hiki. And you lie. Na ukadanganya. Naye pia chini. They carried on the service. Wakambeba pia huyo. In Martin Church if that happened everybody okay. That's terrible. He died. Let's stop the service. Everybody goes home. In a Holy Ghost church, you just bury them out back and yeah, carry on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, watu ibadi ya marzike wamekufa. Lakini when, ibadi ya Roho Mtakatifu munawazika na munaendelea. When I was a little boy growing up in church, when we would drive by historical churches, watu wanaelekea kwa makanisa zamani. And the graveyards around the church. Na kuna makaburi pale kanisani. Ni kwa That church had much power. Hiyo kanisa ilikuwa na nguvu. Those are the people that died <laughs> in the service and they buried them right there. I didn't know. Mimi nilikuwa naangalia makaburi ya sababu. Because when you read Acts 5, you know they just buried them outside. Hawa ni kama walikufia kanisani wakaziko hapo. I didn't realize that people wanted to be buried in the church. Mimi nilikuwa nafikiria kumbe watu wangependa kugeuza kanisa iwe kaburi. If you go to England this whole church is covered with everywhere. Unapata kwa makanisa ya Uingereza makaburi kila mahali. That's another story. Na hiyo ni kisa ingine. Which will leave alone, yeah. Wacha tuachane na hiyo. All right, so they 12. Kumi na mbili. Now look what it says here. They went into the synagogue and spoke boldly wakaingia kwa sinagogi na wakazungumza kwa ujasiri boldly kwa ujasiri boldly kwa ushujaa na ujasiri say amen over there gate 2 on the fire exit hebu semeni amen mlio pande hii i'm talking to you na ongea na yeye pale sitting there the two ladies wale wamekaa pale kwa liko na pande out the perimeter of the pavilion pale 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 pande inaelekeza nawaona They spoke boldly for three months. Wakaongea kwa ujasiri kwa miezi mitatu. Disputing. Akihojiana na watu. Somebody said I don't want to dispute anything. Nasema sitaki kuhojiana na mtu. You have to men of God. Mhm. Mm Persuading. Wakishawishi. The things concerning the kingdom of God. Katika mambo ya ufalme wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, "Oh, I didn't know a man of God should do that." Nasema sikujua mtu mwana faa kufanya hilo. That's why the church is not seeing results. Ndio kanisa basi leo halioni matokeo. Because everybody wants to choose their words correctly. Kila mmoja angependa kuchagua maneno. Don't want to offend anybody. Unataki kukwaza mtu. But you can't then you're not speaking boldly. Lakini hauoneni kwa ujasiri. In, in the amplified classic, mm, katika tafsiri ya amplified hiyo. It says here, inasema they spoke boldly. Walena kwa ujasiri. Persuading wakishawishi arguing wakibishana pleading na wakisihi about the kingdom of god kwa habari za ufano wa mungu now stop for a moment and think about this hebu tulia utafakari jambo hili who is this nani huyu this is the apostle paul huyu ni mtume paulo you couldn't get any better than him uwezi kuwa bora kumlipa he wrote nearly two thirds of the new testament hata thuluthi mbili ya agano jipya jesus appeared him on the road to damascus yesu alikutana naye katika barabara ya damaski so you would think that if the apostle paul was doing a revival kama mtume paulo alikuwa anafanya mkutano wa msho it would be great success kukua basi ni mkutano wa faida kubwa but that's not what happened lakini sio hivyo ilitendeka for three months they were doing it kwa miezi mitatu wamekuwa kifanya and everything went upside down na kila kitu kika wakageuza Who knew what I'm telling you now? Who knew about what Nani anaelewa kile ambacho nilikuwa nawaambia? Because everybody said, if Apostle Paul was here he would do a great job. Wengine wanasema kama mtume Paulo angepewa angekuwa hapo angefanya kitu kubwa. No, he wouldn't. Ange angefanya. No, he would do. If Apostle Paul was here he would do a great job. No, he would not. Kama mtume Paulo angekuwa hapo angefanya kitu kubwa. Somebody somebody even said if Jesus was here he would do a great job. Hata wengine wanasema Yesu angekuwa hapo angefanya kitu kubwa. Jesus went to Nazareth. Yesu aliingia Nazareth. He could do no mighty work because of them akufanya mambo makubwa kwa sababu ya kutoamini he healed a few people aliponya tu wachache of minor ailments ya magonjwa madogo madogo an ingrown toenail and a case of hemorrhoids minor ailment Ma magonjwa madogo madogo Which really is not a minor ailment if you've ever had an ingrown toenail or a case of hemorrhoids it's pretty bad you understand what i'm saying na ile kile nasema you see nobody got healed of a major miracle it was just minor ilikuwa tu magonjwa madogo I remember 
in my early part of my ministry back nakumbuka katika huduma yangu pale awali 40 years ago miaka 40 iliyopita i went to a place and i preached my heart out nilianda nikaubiri sana i didn't see anything happen like i wanted to na sikuona chochote kitendeka vile ninavyotaka i said to my wife i i don't understand i prayed for hours i preached and we didn't see much breakthrough nikamwambia mke wangu mimi sielewi tumeomba tumehubiri na hakuna kinatendeka in the car i said lord if it's me tell me muniambie i change I'll change whatever you tell me to do. Kile nimebadili kile utaniambia ndafanya. And the Lord said to me, son, I would worry about it. Na akaniambia Mungu akaniambia mwanangu mimi sijali. I went, what? He said, son, if I was there I couldn't have done much more myself. And then I thought, no, this is the devil. I nika said, Lord, se, if sema, you were here, you were here better. He said, no. I went, apana. and I could do no mighty work because of the unbelief. Na si kufanya makubwa kwa sababu ya kutoa mimi. Oh, I understand nika now. Sema, so sema. God began to show me how to have revival. You have to bring the word of God and move that stuff out. Nikaelewa nikasema Bwana uweze kunisaidia kuweza kuleta ufufuo ili uondoe hicho kitu itoke kwa watu. Like a Holy Ghost bulldozer. Na Roho Mtakatifu akasha. And you use dynamite and you blow that up and you put the bulldozer through there. Akatumia mlipuko which preachers don't want to do that. Wao ni wasifanya hivyo. But that's what's going to shake Kenya. Lakini hiyo ndio inasafgeuza ufalme. If you won't do it, kama utafanya, God's still going to do what he does. Mungu atafanya anachofanya. I'll prophesy to you right now what's going to happen. Nakutabiria sasa kitakachotendeka. This will happen in Nigeria, this is going to happen in many countries. Ilifanyika Nigeria na nchi nyingi. If those that are in place will not do it. Kama wale wale walio katika utawala hawatafanya. Bwana ataibua yule ambaye ni bure. Because the work of God is going to be accomplished in this kazi ya Bwana lazima ijulishe. Jesus is coming very very soon. Yesu anarudi hivi karibuni. And God will put people in place that have a fire and a holy boldness where they have no fear of man. Bwana ataweka watu katika uongozi ambao hawana kuogopa watu na walio na nguvu ya Roho Mtakatifu. Because the Bible says the fear of man brings a snare. Maandiko yanasema kwamba kuogopa mwanadamu lete mpego. So for three months. Kwa miezi mitatu. For three months. Miezi mitatu. For three months. Miezi mitatu. That's a long time. Ni muda mrefu huo. And then the Bible says verse 9 when divers were hardened and believed not. Na maandiko yanasema lakini weng, wengine walikaidi wakakataa kuamini msadi wa tisa but speak evil of the way before the multitude waka wakitukana wak, ile njia mbele ya mkutano he, he departed from them akaondoka in the amplified says but when some became more and more stubborn na tafsiri la amplified inasema wengine walipoendelea kuwa wakaidi kama mikia ya nguruwe so you're pastor and you're preaching na Ubiri, and people becoming stubborn and paula na ubiri na watu wanaendelea kuwa wakaidi hardened wamekuwa na mioyo migumu unbelieving wasioamini discrediting and reviling na kutukana na kuidharao speaking evil way of the lord before the congregation na kuongea vibaya mbele ya umati what did he do alifanya nini did he just stay there aliketi hapo tu no lahasha it says he separated himself from them akaondoka akawaacha taking the disciples with him akawatenga wanafunzi na akawapeleka and holding daily discussions in the lecture room of Tyrannus akiojiana na watu kila siku katika darasa ya mtu mmoja jina lake Tirano 10:00 to 3:00 kuanzia saa 4 hadi saa 9 that's five hours masaa matano every day kila wakati and it says here this continued for two years Mandiko kasema na ikaendelea kwa miaka miwili so that all the inhabitants ili watu wote walioishi pale of Kenya wa Kenya Come on now I'm heading somewhere here Ninaelekea pahali and of course it's all in the context of Asia Jews as well as Greeks heard the word of the Lord concerning the attainment through Christ of eternal salvation in the kingdom of God Wakasikia neno la Bwana kuhusu ufalme wa Mungu And then God did unusual and extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. Na Bwana akafanya maajabu na miujiza kwa mikono ya Paulo. I'm not saying we can't have miracles here today. I'm not saying that. Sijasema hatakuwa na miujiza leo hapa. Because wherever Jesus is, you'll be. Maana kila pali Yesu hapo lazima. I'm talking about shaking a region. 
Nasema kutingiza eneo. It's going to take longer than one or two days. Itachukua zaidi ya siku moja ama siku mbili. In actual fact, you might, if I stayed there for three months. Ningeketi hapa, ningekaa hapa nji hii kwa miezi mitatu. By the time three months ago, some people will want to kill me. Watu watataka hata kunyua. Are you with me? Munanielewa? Don't look there and check it. No, Pastor Ronnie will never want to do that. You, you haven't, haven't heard any, everything I'm pre- preaching. Bado sijalipua yote. <laughs> as long as we talk about somebody else, you'll be happy. Ah, oh, they need to hear that, I'll tell you. But Wengine, the moment, oh no. Apana, he's talking about me. Ana, ana mimi. So two years, five hours every day, Masama tano kila siku and then God kamili. began to do unusual, extraordinary miracles. So kwa that handkerchiefs, handkerchiefs, Na, adi or aprons or towels that touched his skin were carried away under the sick folk. Hata wagonjwa wakaletewa leso na nguo zilizotoka kwenye mwili wake. And the disease left them and evil spirits came out of them. Na magonjwa yakaondoka pepo wachafu wakatoka. So if we talk of revival in Kenya, tukiongea juu ya ufufi hapa Kenya, we should believe God. Tunastahili kumwamini Mungu. That over the next 36 months kwamba kwa miezi 36 kwa kutoka sasa. In all 47 counties. Katika gatuzi zote 47. Churches Makanisa become places itakuwa maeneo are just open day and night ambayo yamefunguliwa usiku na mchana where people come from near and far watu wanatoka mbali na karibu and they don't have to go to witch doctors na wataenda kwa wachawi because the witch doctors are the only one in the neighborhood that has power kwa sababu ati ni mchawi peke yake ndiye ana nguvu katika maeneo hayo they don't have to go to fortune tellers na wataenda katika wasoma wapiga ramli somebody said people aren't doing that they do that usiseme watu hawafanyi wanafanya hivyo wanafanya hivyo in america kula americani there's even ministers they call witch doctors because their prophetic gift not working that well <laughs> so, so they call somebody to what's the spirit saying you know? they're so deaf they can't hear the Holy Ghost they, they want to hear what a devil has to say we, we don't go to the devil to find out what's happening we, we go to God to find out what's happening. But the church has to fill the void. Man was made for the supernatural. And the supernatural was made for man. Man is a supernatural being. You get saved supernaturally. You go from death to life. You go from darkness to light. That's supernatural. You get baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's supernatural. You lay hands on the sick. That's supernatural. You go to preach the gospel. God confirms the word with signs following. There is nothing natural about the gospel. It is all powerful. It comes with power. And signs and wonders follow. Can you say amen? The devil hates it. He can't stand it. And so, because the attack against the supernatural being so big, people shy away because they don't want to be associated well we're not like that somebody said there was a man he was selling salvation I mean I've seen a lot of stuff over the years <laughs> people doing every kind of thing you know. if, you, if you want a junior prophet Twenty dollars, you get a word. The dollar is shirini. Then, but uh, you're not going to get a big word. Just small word. Maybe it's a color and a month. Okay, taka mkubwa basi utaongeza. He's a learner prophet, you know. Um, blue, in the month of June. Katika mwezi wa sita. Oh, no, no, no. Yani sarakazi zimekuwa nyingi sana. If you want a more advanced prophet. 
Ukitaka wale manabi waliobobea ni dola elfu kumi na utapata neno la specially I've seen all that stuff. Nimeona sarakazi zote. It's nonsense people. Let's let me say. Ni kitu cha kichinga. You should go praying, praying to get a word from God. Unaanza kulipa upokee neno kutoka kwa Mungu? I can teach you how to hear God. You never need to listen to God from somebody else. Ninaanza kufunza jinsi ya kumsikiza Mungu bila kulipa chochote. Usikize sauti yake. He will talk to you. Atakusungumzia. And I'm not taking away from prophets. Mimi si I believe in real ones. Ninaamini katika manabii wa kweli. So what's the real the difference between the real and the fake? Tofauti basi ya yule feki na yule wa uhalisi. The real always points to Jesus. Wa kweli anamsikiza Yesu. always points to them. Bandia anajisikia wewe mwenyewe. I'm just going to tell you right now. Naambia sasa hivi. So when you draw everything to yourself then you are abusing the gospel but when you point everything to Jesus because he's the one that gets the glory anyway all glory all honor to his name and then I also give him all the criticism so he said how can you do that well, if you give him all the glory and somebody accuse you and you take the criticism then inadvertently you take in the glory because while you say I didn't do anything now you're trying to defend yourself from what you, they said you did Jesus said it's not I that do the work but my father within me he doeth the work he's the one that gets the glory can you say amen amen It's interesting to note when you follow the ministry of Jesus that he actually healed people and said don't tell anybody don't tell anybody <laughs> he healed somebody said don't tell people because he would be inundated there would be no place for them to go do you understand what i'm saying kwa sababu hataondoka sinaelewa kile anasema now you can't heal a blind man and say don't tell anybody unaponya kipofu na mwambia sieleze yeyote he's going to run and tell everybody atakimbia tu na kueleza kila mtu so <clears throat> there's a lot of people always want everybody to tell kuna watu wengi wanaweza eleza not what jesus has done kila yesu sio kile yesu amefanya but what they've done lakini kile wao wamefanya You know, people come to me they, they, oh, my life was such a I said well it's all the lord you know what wengi wanakuja kwangu yeah well right, pastor we, we give honor where honor is due i Patia said pali there's a big difference between honor and worship unajua kuna tofauti hapa kuna heshima na kuabudu i landed in a certain country and the people were on their face and kissing nilienda katika nchi fulani watu wanapiga magoti nikamwambia why no kiss my feet and worship Ati get up on the miguu yangu hiyo ni kunyapo we showing honor i said no i feel terrible akasema tunakuheshimu nasema hiyo si heshima i'm right about it i said all the honor goes to nasema heshima yote inaenda kwa mungu all the glory goes to utukufu wote unaenda kwa mungu to he who sits on the throne anayeketi kwenye kiti cha enzi so that's how you know the difference between what's real and what's fake hapo ndio sasa utaelewa tofauti you point everybody to jesus unaonyesha kila mmoja kristo not even the name of the church or the denomination at, at in this final hour sorry brother I'm excited so I'm no way. I, to in this sana. hour wakati huu the names of churches will grow dim and the names of men will grow dim But the name of Jesus will grow louder. Majina ya dhehebu yanadidimia, majina ya wanadamu yanadidimia, lakini jina la Yesu linatukuzwa. And I'm not taking away that God owns Jesus people. Sia sia tis naondoa. Because Watu. God does choose people. Maana Mungu chagua. And God does put his hand on them. Na anaweka jina neno lake juu yao. Na special anointing. Na anawapatia upako. But we have to stay humble. Lakini lazima tunyenyekee. We have to stay submitted. Lazima tunyenyekee. We have to stay healed. Lazima tumsikize. To every single day. Kwa kila siku. Our life must be on the altar. Maisha yetu yakuwe kwenye madhabahu. Listen, I've been in the ministry long enough. Nimekuwa kwa huduma kwa miaka. I could just kind of fade into nothing. You know what I mean? Nani elewa? Kind of retire. Write some books. Nimeandika kuandika vitabu. One conference a month. Nafanya mikutano kwenye makongamano. Live on a beach. 
I mean, I, yeah. But do you think I would be happy? Because every time I see people, I weep. I hear the cry of the nation. I hear people, I hear people in darkness. I hear them calling out. I have to go. I have to. There's a fire on the inside. I have to go. Can you say amen? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, I love this passage. Because this gave me a plan which I want to give to you. This was two years and three months. And the whole place was shaken. Well, how we, how we do that? Not just with speaking. Preaching. Teaching. Demonstrate. Preach. Teach. Demonstrate. Preach. Teach. Demonstrate. Ubiri. Fundisha, dhihirisha. If you preach it, you must demonstrate. If you preach it, you've got to demonstrate it. Are you with me? We cannot just bring messages. There are many wonderful messages. But nothing then was done. We've got to drop the message. And then step back. And watch the Holy Ghost do it. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we have to have faith. Like the apostles. When they saw the man lame at the gate. That wasn't even in the church service. That was just at the gate. The power was so strong on the apostles. That the people took the sick and lined them in the streets. And Peter went by. He never prayed for anybody. He didn't even lay his hands on them. Just the power coming off of him was healing the sick. The power emanating from him. Go read it. Acts chapter 5 verse 19. Go read it. There was a power that was emanating. That was coming off of him. Because you carry it. Remember we talked about the well this morning. Amen. Amina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're carrying his presence. Wherever you go, their presence will go. When you walk in the door, the very atmosphere of the room is going to change. When you walk in the door, hell will leave out the back. The devil will say, ah, ah, we better leave now. We should, we, oh, we better leave. Leave, leave Nairobi. We've got to get out. They've got to totally go to fire. Where are we going? Oh, we should go to Somalia. We'll go there. We'll, we'll hang with some Somali terrorists off the coast on some boat. Because there's nowhere for them to go. Are you with me? Amen. The devil's on the run. He's afraid. He's afraid of Holy Ghost people. He's afraid of people full of the fire of God. Because they never, they, they're bold. They're just bold. I never said bold. I said bold. Bold. The wicked runs when no one is chasing. But the righteous are bold. There's a liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No fear. No fear. So two years and three months and the whole of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Could it be possible that here we are in the month of September, there we got October, November, and December. So there's three months. If you want to do any fighting, do it within those three months. No, I'm teasing, but I'm just saying. And that the whole of 2024 and 2025 can be focused on every region taking territory as every born again believer is mobilized to win souls and to lay hands on the sick. Now, 
as a leader you feel responsible for those people Kama kiongozi unajukumika kwa they make a mistake Wasifanye makosa It doesn't matter when, when I started I made a lot of mistakes Nilipoanza nilifanya makosa nyingi Are you with me Utoka pamoja You do when you 19 20 21 Some of the first miracles I saw were in the mud huts of the trans sky. Mujiza wa kwanza niliona the trans sky. You know where that is? Yeah, the land of the Kosa. Kosa, huh? Oh, yeah, that is Kosa. Eastern Cup. All right. Okay. So okay. the land of the tra- the trans sky. And they take cow dung and put it on the floor. Wakayaki. Then they polish it. It's very nice. When it's when it's dry then the dust comes up and you just breathe breathing recycled grass. That's all cow dung is. Anaelezea kuhusu kule, sawa? Amen. It's just recycled grass. And uh, and so I saw a lot of miracles there. Kwa hiyo niliona miujiza mingi huko. And I tried a lot of things. Na nikaona mambo mengi. Because nobody would ever know. It was never on television. Kwa sababu kuna mtu angejua kwa sababu ingekuwa katika au katika runinga. Nobody recorded it. Hakuna mtu aliweza kuweka kwenye nakala. But I was I was starting out in the ministry, you know. Nitoka katika jeshi. I was at one service on Wednesday. I'm going to pray for every deaf person here of the day. You want to turn up your hearing aid? No. I'm going to pray for every deaf person today. <laughs> And so, so I didn't know that 50 deaf people came. Sikujua kulikuwa na watu 15 ambao walikuwa visi. I prayed for the first person. Nikaombea mtu wa kwanza. Nothing. Hakuna kile kile. The second person. Mtu wa pili. Nothing. Hakuna kilichotendeka. The third person. Watatu. Nothing. Hakuna kile kilichotendeka. I'm not stopping. I, Nikasema I can die right here but they can and then the third person he popped up and then they open then they open and wakanza, they kufunguka, kufunguka, so, kufunguka, but kufunguka. the first three were very shaky you know. Like, Na wakaanza kutetemeka. Help. Toka. So they brought this little boy forward. Wakamleta huyu kijana mbele. He had club feet. Alikuwa na miguu ambayo ime. His feet were pointing down. Ambayo ilikuwa inaangalia. So his heels were pointing up. Na alikuwa na ulevi so here I am. I'm only, I think I was only 20, 20 years old. Miaka ishina kitu. And uh, I, I, I was standing there and I, somebody just come over me and said, take off all that stuff. Nikasimama tena kasema toka. And then I think, what are you doing? Nikasema nina tendeka. I just take it all off. Nikasema toa yote. They take it off now. Akayondoa. God is hand, his feet. Nikaona miguu yake. In my hands. Kwa mikono, kwa mikono yangu. And then I said Father, nikasema baba. In the name of she, I didn't get time to say this. Kwa jina la ye, hata sikamalizia kusema, sikusimalizia this. The power of God hit. The legs turned around in front of My interpreter dropped in the floor. Kipof, eh, m- He goes, m- how? M- how? Wangu chini. how? I've never seen anything Akasama like this. Akasema kitu kama hii. Miujiza imetendeka. And that was the first great miracle that I saw like that. Miujiza kubwa ambayo nimeiona. But you have to step out a boldness will come on you. Lazima utoke nje ujasiri uonekane. And you'll find yourself in tight situations. People will come to Unana, kill you. Watu wanakuja kwako. Other people come they're going to kill me. People, watu wanataka kuniua. Other people come I'm coming to kill you. Wengine wananiambia nataka kukuua. I was leading worship on the keyboard. Nilikuwa naongoza ibada ya kuabudu katika keyboard. We record albums. And a man was looking back. He goes I am going Mtu akaniambia read lips I am going to kill you Akaniambia ninaenda kukuua I sing another song Nikaimba wimbo mwingine I thought Okay Sawa today, today I'm going home to be with Jesus Leo nitaenda nyumbani kuwa na Yesu So I thought okay he's going to kill me so I uh, finished the worship and I started to preach and I'm walking around praying for people people are getting touched Ataenda kuniua nimemaliza kuabudu nikazunguka nikiombea watu And I get down to where he is Nikatoka he looks at me he says Akaniangalia I told you I'm going to kill you Akaniambia nimekuambia nitakuua So I burst out laughing Nikaona ninacheka I said you can't kill me Nikamwambia utaniua I said I'm already dead Nikamwambia mimi ni mfu And he looked at me Na akanitazama And he got up and left the building Akatoka na akaondoka kwa ukumbi Oh Lord now we're in trouble now Nikamwambia bwana sasa tuko katika mataifa Kule America 
But nothing happened. I, pray, I said, everybody just pray for that man. I really prayed fervently. You know, when your life depends on it, you really pray. You know what I mean? I mean, I didn't pray. Lord, help the brother. Let him find your will. I said, Father! Grab him and do whatever you want. <laughs> it was a fervent prayer, you know. The God's coming to kill me, you know. Everybody pray. It's not your head on the line. It's mine. Yeah. Anyway, the next morning, I walk out of the morning service and he's sitting there. Three rows back. I go, oh. Okay. All right. Well, this is my final day. I'm... I, I, I'm glad I kissed my wife goodbye this morning. So I walk around, as you can see. I never stay on the platform. I always walk around. I like, I like, I like to interact with people. And if I feel I'm not getting results in certain places, I go to wherever the people are open. I'm a missionary. Travel. I, I love to travel. I'm traveling. I'm actually traveling to different counties of Kenya as I'm walking here. Amen. And uh, but he did not respond. He just stared at me. So then I gave an altar call and he came right up to get saved. Now watch this. This shocked me to the core. So as I'm praying the prayer, he's accepting Jesus. He falls on the ground and starts to cry like a baby. And then he starts to quote whole chapters of the Bible. Word for word. I went, uh, last night you were going to kill me. Now you're quoting whole chapters. Something is wrong here. So I had to find a I, said, him up. I said, what in the world? Where he he said, look, I've been in the Marines. And I, I, I've killed eight people. He said God had called me as a young man to the ministry. And he said my wife had an affair on me. And the denomination kicked me out. So I went in the military and I became a hard man. And I killed like eight people. And I blamed God. And when I saw you, I wanted to kill you. But he said, I think you were praying for me last night. I said, um, you know, I prayed for you. Because <laughs> I still prayed when I got home again. I said, what happened? He said, I left here. He said, I have a 45 pistol. I can dismantle, I can shoot anything. He said, I loaded and put it like there and it went click. I reloaded, click. I reloaded, click. I took it apart, I cleaned it, I put it together, click. I got so mad, I got into my car and I took it to 100 miles an hour and I tried to ride into a tree. I, I kept coming around the other side of the tree. I never could hit the tree. Mm -hmm. He said, every place the tree was supposed to be, it wasn't. And I, I sat and I was just shaking. And then I realized that you were praying. And the Lord said, son, it's time to surrender your life. And that's what he did. He came back and surrendered his life. You know? so, so why am I saying that? Because the gospel is going to put you into precarious situations when you're preaching. Now you've got to pray. And especially if there's a showdown that, that can easily take place which has happened throughout history which I believe we're coming more and more closer to big showdowns. Are you with me? There's a story that I read Kuna kisa nilisoma, that really gripped me. Kulinipa, uzuni, and sasa. it's from the adventures of Marco Polo. Uh, uyo, Marco Polo. From the unabridged version, not the one they altered. Mm -hmm. Kunile ya kwanza, wache and of course, juzi. there are many versions of it going around. Na za because uh, you know, certain denominations always want to lay claim to the story. Kuna dini nasema, ha, hii kisa and ni there's chetu. certain... Uh, places they say it happened, but it didn't happen. This one, what I'm about to tell you took place in Iraq. 
ilitokea Iraq back in the 1200s katika miaka ya 1200 um, there was a certain caliph aha kulikuwa na mtu huyo who ran that whole area ambaye alikuwa anatawala eneo hilo the city of baghdad was on the trade route from east to west mji wa baghdad ulikuwa na njia hiyo kutoka mashariki kwenda magharibi city of great spices and wool and ilikuwa ni mji ambao ulikuwa vidia ulikuwa mali the christians were very wealthy they actually controlled part of the trade route biashara ya manukato ilikuwa pale imenoga ni kwa watu walikuwa wanapita pale kibiashara he always spent his time trying to find fault with the believers kwa jamaa alikuwa anaangalia wakristo aone dosari dosari kwa if they could prove what was in the bible aone kama wanaweza kudhibitisha madai ya biblia uki dhibitisha dai la biblia anachana na they couldn't prove it kama ungeweza kudhibitisha dai basi anawa anawakabili and so he found the scripture through his men that were with him akapata andiko kwa mtu ambaye alikuwa pamoja naye that if you have faith as a grain of mustard ya kwamba ukiwa na na mbegu imani ndio kama mbegu ya hadhara you can say to a mountain be mlima toka na ukahama so they came to me say we we have we we've got them now we've got the christian akasema sasa tumepambia mlima hama ni kama let's put them to the test wakamjaribisha sasa now marco polo writes about it because he his father and his uncle left and went to china marco polo anaongea kwa maana mjomba wake alitoka na kaenda kule china china really begged for the gospel to come na walikuwa wamesihi injili ifike kwa people didn't go lakini watu hawakuenda and in the ancient chinese language na katika lugha of all the, the letters 6000 in the alphabet nyaraka za kichina uh, the, zote hizo the word boat mhm has got eight people in a boat neno meli ina watu nane ndani and then the word for if, the, if, you, if there was a word like righteousness is a lamb of us so somebody got there in the early foundation of the language mtu ni kama alifika pale kwenye mianzo ya misingi ya neno lugha ya hiyo and tells me god has never left any group of people without mimi nakwambia kwamba mungu ni wajabu hawachi he loves people he never left kundi hata moja bila kuwafikia anapenda watu mungu so these stories were told to him basi hizi visa akaandika kana kili apparently on his deathbed na katika kitanda chake akifa he said are the stories in your book true akasema je akaulizwa hizi visa kwenye kitabu chako ni za ukweli he said the half has never yet been told akasema labda hazijawahi kuelezewa so listen this this is going to shock you now this is history hii itakushtua sana ni historia not a novel this took place ilitokea si hekaya so this certain caliph sasa huyu jamaa huyo he called all the christians together akaita wakristo wote akawakusanya pamoja there was 100000 of them kulikuwa na laki moja they were split into two groups wakagawanywa vikundi viwili the jacobites and the nestorians ah mayokobai na kundi lingine pia and they disagreed with one another na wakakosana but they both believed in the cross lakini wote waliamini msalaba and that's the thing that people don't understand hiyo ni kitu moja watu waelewi When it doesn't matter if you Methodist Presbyterian or Anglican or charismatic or Pentecostal Haijalishi dhehebu lako If you believe in the cross Kama unaamini msalaba you're an enemy to certain groups Wewe ni adui wa vikundi vingine fulani Yeah but we don't baptize in water wala mbao baptizo kwa maji. It doesn't matter you believe in the cross you did. Wewe jalishi uliamini msalaba. Atio sisi hatongii kwa lugha haijalishi hiyo. Certain places in the Middle East Mhm kule the, the church, they they all stand together because if you don't you did wanasema pamoja kule makanisa kule it's only in certain other cultures ya where everybody is divided ni huku tu ngine ambapo tunagawanyika sana and i'm not saying that's how can it is because i've seen many people here from many different leaders in kenya nimeona watu hapa ambao wako kwenye viongozi tofauti sana kenya so if anything i'm encouraged because i see more leaders coming together in kenya than any other country i've been in na tiwa moyo kwa maana hapa kenya naona viongozi wanakuja wengi pamoja kuliko taifa lolote nimewahi tembea we might not understand everything that the other ones doing tunaweza kosa kuelewa kikamilifu matukio ama matendo wengine but we are told from the scripture not to judge another man's na, na tumeambua kwamba tusihukumu wengine and ultimately we are going to stand before god and have to give an account of what we've done with our life here on the earth kila mmoja atoa hesabu zake mbele ya bwana upeane hesabu zako ya matukio yako maisha and we should pray for one another lakini tunastahili kuombea na tutiane moyo can you say amen hebu sema amina So anyway um 
this um, caliph called them all together, took them to the, this valley. Basi hata hivyo kwa maana aliangalia ndiko la. was this huge mountain. Na mlima kamwambia kapeleka bondeni akamwambia haya. He said to all the Christians. Akamwambia wa Kristo wote sasa pale bondeni. There's the scripture in in, your, in the Bible. Una ndiko kwenye Biblia yenu. It says if you have faith as a mustard seed. Inasema ukiwa na imani ndio kama mbegu ya ndani. Utasema na mlima na utahama. Do you believe it? Je, nyinyi mnaamini? Yes, we do. Wakasema wanaamini. He said good. Sasa basi sawa. Because 10 days from now. Kwa maana siku mbili kutoka leo. You will move the mountain. Mtahamisha mlima. And if you don't move the mountain I will give you an opportunity to convert to my religion. Nitawapa nafasi basi muache dini yenu. If you want I'm going to kill all of you. Lasivyo na wao wote. Take everything you have. Nitachukua mali yenu yote. Because you have proved. Kwa maana meudhibitisha basi. You are fallen away from the faith. Ya kwamba nyinyi mmeacha imani. Because you don't even have faith as big as Kwa maana hata hamna imani ya kuhamisha mlima. Unajua inakaa ni jaribu lakini kama ingekuwa ni wewe je uko pale Na wakaanguka chini Christians old and young wa Kristo wa changa wa toto wa kamlinia Mungu siku na mchana Mungu awasaidie wahamishe mlima hawakujua la kufanya walikuwa wanafunga na kuomba ni historia ya kweli ilitokea Iraq kwa hivyo On the eighth day, a very pious bishop. It was that's how the writing said. It was in it was the the writings of Marco Polo was like an old English, if you know what I mean. Marco Polo alikuwa na nika nile kingereza ya zamani. And as he said, a very pious bishop. Anasema askoflani wa eshima. Had a vision. Akaona mauno. That he must go to a village north. Aende kijiji kule kaskazini. You know. If it was a couple of hours I'm not sure how far but just go north Nilikuwa ni masaa sina hakika Kwenye kijiji hicho there was a one night shoemaker Kulikuwa na ambaye afanya fundi wa viatu one night shoemaker was the, was the gift of divine grace Anajichomoja na alikuwa na kipawa cha neema ya kiungu to move the mountain ya kuhamisha mlima So the bishop went he made this fast as he could Akaenda mbio sana kwa kasi wana makataa kumbuka he, he got to the village Akafika pale kijijini He found the shoemaker very ha, happy when you when God wa, says there's a shoemaker you happy when you find one Viatu yuko pale akiwa amevana furaha sana And when he went inside Alipoingia ndani He was happy because he had one eye. Akaona kweli anajichomoja. Mungu akikwambia utafute mjicho moja. Then you know you're going to fail. Utaanguka tafuta huyo. I don't need a two eye. I need a one eye. Nahitaji ule maambiwa jicho moja. Fundi wa viatu jicho moja. So he said to one at shoemaker. Akampata akamwambia You have to come. Lazima uje nami. The Christians in great peril. Wa Kristo wa katika shida kubwa. We have to move the mountain. Tumehamisha mlima. If we don't move it, we we everywhere going to lose everything. Tusipofaulu tunakuwa. Tutakufa. We have to convert. Ama tuwe badilishe dini. He said no. Akasema hapana siji. You've got the wrong person. Wamepata mtu kasoro. I'm unworthy. Mimi si stahili. I'm not I don't have anything. Mimi si nacho chote. I can't move anything. Siwezi. No. God show me. You are the one that must come. Mungu ambia ni wewe unaweza. He was very forceful. Na akawa na nguvu. This is his last opportunity. Kumani ilikuwa nafasi ya mwisho. Unaenda na mimi. You're going to move mountain. Lazima utahamisha mlima wewe. Wewe ndio Mungu aliniambia. Ukicheza na ngoa jicho wengine moja imebaki. Wewe ndio Mungu aliniambia nene na wewe. But the story is kisa kinasemekana hivi. The reason he had the one eye. Sababu ya kuwa na jicho moja was because a very beautiful woman came ni kwa ajili binti moja kipusa binti moja kipusa alikuja ashonewe kiatu pale akakaa chini na nguo yake kafunguka na ikawa paja lake likaonekana simulio inasema basi akachemka hiyo utajijazia baadaye so Remembering the scripture. Kikumbuka andiko. They said if you right eye offend you pluck it out. Inasema kama jicho moja na kukwaza Eli kwenda mbinguni na jicho moja kuliko mbili. He immediately would take no further measurement. Yeye akaangalia. He said you need to leave my store now. Kama mtoke hapa kwangu. He went in the back room and took a hook. Akachukua 
and he plucked out his eye. Now we say that's a little excessive. But I say he must have meant business with God. Because when the mountain was have to be moved, it was him that was the one to move the mountain. And I'm here to ask you today, who is the one? Nani huyo? That will move the mountains that At, are facing Kenya in this hour. Amisha, Where are the men and the women that will be ube? used of God Mungu. to move the mountains? Kenya. Must God go find somebody from Uganda? Must God bring somebody from Malawi? Malawi? Does God have to bring somebody from Tanzania? Tanzania Mungu kweli. Na Where wapo? must God go find them? Mungu Are they here on the field today? Hapa wanja leo? I believe they are on the field today. Hapa leo wanja huu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the fire of God. Na hisi nguvu na moto wa Mungu. One man, mtumoja. one woman, Manamke moja. full of the Holy Ghost, and mountains will move. Na milima itahama. Every mountain that is standing against this nation Kila. will be removed by a Holy Ghost and fire people. Kila milima unosa mama kujumbe na Kenya, utahamishwa na watu walio cha roo, mtakatifu na moto wa roo. So, Kwa hivyo, on the tenth day, siku ya kumi, the, the writing said they got up way before dawn. Ni karibu, and they prayed really fast. pale wakaanza kuomba. They went out in the valley. There was the caliph and all his men. Wakaenda pale bondeni kulikuwa na mwamba uko pale. They took the shoemaker. Wakachukua mshona na viatu. He had a cross on a, on a stick. Ame, shika kijiti. Hole. And they said, okay, there we are. There's the mountain. That's the mountain needs to be moved. Akambiwa, uh, mulima ndio ule. Pale. So, Enda sasa fanya kazi. Do what you need to do. Wewe fanya ya kupasayo. <laughs> and fanya. they were like praying. Yeah. And, and the shoemaker was calm. Na msana viyata kawa metulia tu. He's walked out. Haka toka inje. He stood in front of the mountain. Kasama mbele ya mlima. He knelt down. Kapika magoti. He said, oh God. Kasama mungu wangu. Of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Wa Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Grant unto us this day. Tupeleo siku ya leo. The gift of divine grace. Kipawa cha neema ya kiungu. Kuhamisha mlima huu. And save your people. Na uokoe watu wako. And he got up. Akasimama. He looked at the mountain. Kangalia mlima. He said mountain. Kasimama mlima. Be moved. Hama. And there was an earthquake. Na pakawa na tetemeko la inchi. And the mountain disappeared. Na mlima ukatoweka. It disappeared. Na sema mlima ukatoweka. In front of everybody's eyes. Mbele ya macho ya kila mmoja. And the writing says the caliph and his men were overcome with stupefaction. Na yule jamaa na watu wake wakashtuka. What does that mean? Wakasema ah nini hivi? Ah ah. They couldn't talk. They were uh, Yaani walishikwa na bumbuazi. And, and they walked around for hours like Wakatembea wakiwa na bumbuazi hapo masaa. So much so that man gave his life to the Lord. Na jamaa kaokoka. He wore a, a cross under his garments. That later when he died, alipokufa, they wouldn't bury him with his predecessor. He was buried in an unmarked grave because he had a cross. Alikuwa na msalaba kazi kwa mahali tofauti si wale waliokuwa nyuma. He left the church alone. Lakini akaachana na kanisa sababu ya mshona na viatu. Waijichu moja aliyehamisha mlima. Back probably 10 maybe 15 years ago. Labda miaka takriban 15 hivi. A friend of mine who had a church in Iraq. Rafiki yangu alikuwa na kanisa Iraq. And I told him the story. Ninamwambia kisa hiki. I said, "Can you find out for me this existed?" Nikwambia nijiulia kama yupo huyu. He called me about 6 months later. He said, "I found them." Akaniambia nimempata. He said they in the mountains. Akasema Iraq. Wakule every year. Mlimani kule kwa mwamba. Like 800 years later. Miaka 800 baadaye. On the day the mountain moved, they still celebrate They call it the day of the divine grace of God where we could move the mountain. I fellowship with them and we still celebrate. Now unfortunately what took place uh -huh. it's okay. Unfortunately what took, he just wants to talk. It's okay. Look at me. Don't worry about that. Angalia mobili. Usijali? Over here. Angalia mbele, angalia mtumishi wa Mungu. Not the look here. Makinika hapa kwa mtumishi. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm telling you. Nawaambia 
So they celebrated every year the day of divine grace. Kwamba kuna neema ya kiungu but kila mwaka. Un- unfortunately, lakini bahati mbaya recent years. Miaka iliyo ya juzi. The organizations which I will not mention here publicly. Shirika ambazo came in and killed many of them and they had to flee. Sitataja hapa hadharani walikuja so wakawa milioni wakatoroka. Ananiambia nini hiyo? They told me you can celebrate what happened 800 years ago. Ndio unaweza kufurahia kilichofurokea miaka. Not have any of what they had 800 years. Na uko unaweza kufurahia kilichotokea miaka milioni iliyopita. Lakini ukose kuwa na walicho nacho. The fire. Lazima kila kizazi kipokee moto wake. Lazima kila ukizazi kipokee upako wake. Eh. That many ministries that started off in the beginning. Huduma nyingi zilianza pale mwanzo. Started off in great power. Zilianza kwa nguvu kubwa. Because of persecution. Na sababu ya mateso. People step back. Watu wakarudi nyuma. Because nobody wants to be persecuted. Sasa hakuna angependa kuteswa leo. And so then they compromise this compromise. Wakakubaliana hili pale waka. But I tell you I feel this so strong in my spirit. Na hisi kwa nguvu rohoni wangu leo. God will take you right back to the first words. Mungu atakuja katika pale mambo ya kwanza. That were prevalent in your ministry. Mambo ya yalikuwa pale kwenye msingi wa huduma. Mambo ya ajabu kufu za ajabu the great churches of Kenya. A fresh wind shall blow again. And the river of God shall flood. This land. And there's not a devil in hell that could stop what God is about to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty men and women of God. Stir yourself up in the things of God. It's time for the work to be done. Can you say amen? You will be persecuted. You might even be arrested. You might get beaten. You might be left for dead. You might have to escape over a city wall in a basket. You might be captured by a Somali terrorist. Who knows? Well, I'm going to sail on the coast. Next thing, you got pirates on your boat. Who knows? It's an adventure anyway. Ni na matukio tu. Amen. Amina. But the Lord is with you. Lakini Bwana yuko nanyi. The Lord is with you. Bwana yuko nanyi. And you have nothing to be afraid of. Na usiogope chochote. You cannot do what I'm telling you without the Holy Ghost. Uwezi fanya kile nakwambia bila Roho Mtakatifu. You can't even do what I'm telling you with the theory of what I'm telling you. Na uwezi fanya hiyo pia ati na maarifa tu uliyo nayo juju. You have to step into lazima uingie mle the full impact of the power katika pachiko kamilifu la nguvu and let god do the work to you na wache mungu afanye kazi ndani yako so that he can do the work through you ili afanye kazi kupitia wewe greater the work he does in you fanya au kufuta kwamba kazi anayofanya ndani yako the greater the work he does through you kazi kubwa anayofanya kazi yako inachangia kazi kubwa atayofanya kupitia wewe can you say amen hebu sema amina hallelujah hallelujah glory to god utukufu kwa mungu Thank you Lord Jesus. Asante Bwana Yesu. Praise God. Bwana wa dhamana. Praise God. Hallelujah Bwana pewe Praise sifa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Bwana pewe sifa. Praise God. Hallelujah Bwana pewe sifa. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. Men and women in this hour. Wake na waume walisaa hili. Step out of the realm of the natural. Tomo kwenye ulimwengu wa kawaida. Uingie ulingo wa kiungo. And we'll walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Na utembee kwa nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. Just like in the book of Acts. Kama wakati wa kitabu cha Mathayo mitume. And it shall be noised abroad. Na itajulikana hapa na mbali. The book of Acts has become common place. Matendo ya mitume yamekuwa mahali pa kawaida. The signs and wonders and miracles. Ishara maajabu na maajabu zinatokea. Men and women what what can we will not compromise ambao watakubaliana they will be used of the lord watatumiwa na mungu even those in the government hata walio katika serikali people will come to them watu watakuja kwao they will talk wataongea and they'll say no watasema la you're lying ah unadanganya wewe last night you had this discussion jana ulikuwa na makubaliano haya na ukafanya mtu huyu paid you money over there wakakupatia pesa pale you're a liar we ni mwongo get out of my office toka ofisini kwangu i'm telling you people are flowing in the power of god watatembea kwa nguvu za bwana hata mofisini na vipawa vya roho will be in business vitakuwa vinafanya kazi They We, want you to sign a contract. Watakwambia weke sahihi kandarasi. Bwana kwambia usikandarasi. Those people are crooked. Wale watu ni matapeli. Usiweke sahihi kandarasi. You will see through everything. Utaona kila kitu. You know things before. Utajua vitu kabla vitokee. You see things before. Utaona mambo kabla itendeke. Can you say amen? Hebu sema amina. Nothing will come on you unaware. Hakuna kitakuzuilia njiani. There won't be tragedy on your life. Hakutakuwa na janga maishani mwako. Nothing will come on you suddenly. Hakuna kuja kwa ghafla. You will be the enemy. Utakanyaga adui. And everywhere you go. Kwa kila njia unaenda 
kingdom of God shall be established. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you didn't realize, I was actually prophesying. Just in case. Somebody didn't know. That's the word of the Lord to you. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hale. Amina. Hale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I told you I was going to talk about the river, but which I'm going to do right now, just for a few minutes. And you can be seated. We talked about the the well. And now, sasa in John seven, katika Johanna saba, which let me read that to you. John chapter seven. Johanna mlango wa saba. Are you happy this one? I mean this afternoon. I mean, whatever time it is. Uh, Amen. I mean, Are you happy? Munafra. John chapter 7. Johanna Sura Saba. And I want to read down here verse 37. So Mapa Chini and Nicola Mustelwa Latina Saba. Now on the final and most important day of the feast. Ata siku ya mwisho siku ile kubwa ya siku kuu. Which is interesting, it's a feast. It's not a funeral. It's a feast. It says here, Jesus, yes, he stood and cried with a loud voice. If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, aniaminiye mimi, who cleaves to, aha, anayeshikamana na, trust in, anaingia ndani, relies on me, ananitegemea, as the scripture has said, kama vile maandiko yalivyonena, from his innermost being, katika mtu wake wa ndani, shall continuously flow springs and rivers of living water. Kwa mfululizo atapatirika mito ya maji yaliyo hai. Ya uzima. He didn't say it would flow once. He said, it's a continual flow. Ni mtiriko wa mfululizo. A continual flow. Ni mfululizo. From the time the Holy Ghost comes on. Wakati roo atakapokuja kwa. There should be a continual flow. Kuna fakwa na mtiriko wa mfululizo. Of the Spirit of God. Waro wa kemungu. Now when you look at different continents. Sasa ukiangalia bara tofauti. The major rivers. Wakona mito mikubwa. I love the Nile River. Napenda mto wa Nile. I love the Zambezi River. Napenda pia Zambezi mto. The Limpopo River. Na pia Limpopo. The Niger. Na na Niger. Many, many rivers. Mito nyingi nyingi. You, you go uh, America Mississippi. Ukienda kwa Amerika kule kuna the Amazon. Mto wa Mississippi. The Ohio. The Ohio. You go to the India, you got rivers in, there. India unapata mito the yao. Ganges River. Unapata mito tofauti. You go to China, you got the Yangtze Kagei. Kenda China kuna mto wao huo. Every place has a river. Kila mahali kuna mto na tele. a river is this life. Mahali popote mto upo kuna uzima na uhai. When there's no river, there is desert, it's dry. Mahali hakuna mto kuna kuwa na ukame na kiangazi. That's why there's the importance of the well. Ndio ni umuhimu wa kisima. We talked about everyone in this place is a well. Kila mtu aliye mahali hapa ni kisima. When you get born again, you become a well. Unapokoka unafanyika kisima wewe. That's the start. Hiyo ndio mwanzo. But our job of what we what I'm envisaging happening today and tomorrow. Lakini kazi ambayo ninatazamia itafanyika leo na pia kesho. Every well here. Ni kwamba kila kisima hapa will become a river. Kitafanyika mto. Because a river shakes a nation. Kwa maana mto zatikisa mataifa. Floods a whole nation. Mto unauisha taifa nzima. And that's what God wants to do. Na Mungu angependa kufanya hivyo. With Kenya. Na Kenya. Can you say amen? Hebu sema amen. And where does this river come from? Na mto huu unatoka wapi? I want you to take your hand put it on your head. Hebu weka mkono wako kichwani. Take your other hand put it on your belly. Mkono mwingine weka tumboni. Now I want you to see the difference. Nataka uone tofauti sasa. The one is your head. 
Um, kono lio kichwani. The other one's your belly. Mwingine kutumboni. River does not come from your head. Mto hautoki kichwani. Jesus never said out of your head would yes, flow so rivers of living water. Atitokan, kutoka na kichwa zako kutoka mito ya maji. He said out of your belly, Alisema, out of your innermost being. Kutoka kwenye tumbo mtu wako wa ndani. It comes from inside here. Dinatoka ndani tumboni. It does not come from up here. Haitoki kwenye akili. Thank God for up here. Asante kwa hapa juu lakini hapa juu. contain the river. Haiwezi ikabeba mto. Ni ndani kwa roho yako. In your heart is the container that causes the river to flow. Moyoni mwako ndio kunasababisha mto kapate kutiririka ndani. Out of your belly. Ndani tumboni mwako mtu. Out of your belly. Katika tumbo lako ndani. Not your neighbor's belly. Si ajirani yako. Not your friend's belly. Hata si wa rafiki yako. It would be good brother if you just let the river flow. Oh itakuwa mdogo itakuwa waache mtu otiri. Why is it always somebody else? Kwa nini wakati mwingine mtu unaelekeza mtu mwingine kidole? I've tried that one time got in a lot of persecution. I, I'm not doing that again. Kati moja nikasema nikateza kama pana sirudi tena hiyo kitu. I just got a PhD. Eh nimepata hasa shahada ya PhD. Now lecturing. Aha. At the university. Kule chuo kikuu. And I don't want to lose my position. Na sitaki kupoteza nafasi yangu. I watch you. Eh. You go do it. Aendelea fanya hivyo. I didn't write this. Nisi kuandika hili? It's not my idea. Si wazo langu. I didn't come up with the idea that out of your belly would flow rivers. Siku ibuka na wazo kwamba toka tumboni mako kutatoka. I just read it. Mi nimesoma Biblia. I'm a simple African boy. Mimi ni kijana mdogo wa Kiafrika. I read it. Nimesoma tu. I believe it. Ani amini. Someone said you really take the Bible literally. Unasema ah, wewe unaamini Biblia moja kwa moja tu? Eh. I don't take it illiterally. Si chukui atikijuju. If the Bible says it then I believe it. Kama Biblia imesema hivyo ninaamini kile kimetokea. If the Bible said that Jonah swallowed the fish I would believe it. Biblia hata kama ingesema Yohana ndiye alimeza samaki ningeamini hata hiyo. He didn't. Eh. Hey. He didn't. Hakuwa kufanya. But if it said he did I would believe it. Mimi nasema hata wacha bila kama Jonah angemeza samaki Biblia isemwe hivyo nitaamini kile Biblia inataja ni ukweli mtupu nisipoamini basi nitahubiliaje ninaweza nikasimama juu ya msingi wa neno kwa maana Mungu anatazamia neno lake kila moja hakuna ahadi yake moja itaanguka ni ina makali kuliko panga wa kuni Yenapamanua mawazo ya mtu ya ndani Sina olamu kama nyundo Inafunja miamba kwa vipande Kwa nangu si kama moto Out of your belly will flow. Katika tumbo mwako utatoka chemchemi. Ni wazola nani hili? The head of the church. Ni kanisa kanisa. The Lord Jesus Christ. Ni Bwana Yesu Kristo. It's his idea. Ni wazola ke Yesu. Eh, ni wazola ke Yesu. I believe. Kama Yesu amesema hivyo, ninaamini hivyo. Hallelujah. 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 Nasema hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Utukufu kwake Mungu. When it happens, inapofanyika, and the river floods its banks. Na mto unavunja mipaka. People that know you. Watu ambao wanakujua. I'm going to rub the eyes. Wata watajipanguza macho. Waseme ah, huu ni nani huyu huyu? Your children are going to say. Watoto wenu watasema that can be my father. Huyo huyo si baba yangu huyo. I've never seen my father. Hapana, sijaona baba yangu akiwa hivi. That cannot be my mother. Huyo hawezi kuwa mama yangu. I have never seen my mother. Sijawahi kuona mama yangu jinsi alivyo sasa. Parents will say Watasema that cannot be my child. Huyu hawezi kuwa mtoto wangu. I have never seen my child like that. Sijamwona mtoto wangu akiwa hivyo. That cannot be my daughter. Hawezi kuwa binti yangu. I have never seen who is this person. Sijawahi kumuona huyu. Nani huyu? When they stand there. Tasimama pale. I see the fire of God upon them. Naona moto wa Bwana juu yao. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Na upako wa Roho Mtakatifu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
and it bubbles. The river bubbles up. You can shut it down. But you can let it flow. Now, um, when I first went to America, I didn't realize the condition of the church. We landed there December of 1987. And I thought, yeah, you always think God lives in America. I mean, they, you know, all the great men. And, and I'm, not, I'm not taking away from what God has done. But there was a major financial crisis. I didn't know that. And people were struggling. And where I came from in the South, uh, Southern Africa, we were in a major crisis always. We, we, we didn't know anything but crisis. And then the church had gone through major upheaval. Major ministries had collapsed. So I walk into church. I'm a happy person. I'm a happy person. I always see the funny side of everything. I just always see it. And my, when I look, when I see people, I see like cartoon characters. I do. I do. I try not to, but I see it like that. And it's Na, way the Lord entertain, entertain, entertain me. I, mean, kama buwana, I wish I did. I see pictures and I see very funny things. I apologize. And so, <laughs> okay. so, so anyway, so I go to churches. I, 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 the pastor said, we must be finished now. I said, well, we just started. He said, no, we must finish quickly. I said, why? Nah. He said, the buffet line at the, at the Holiday Inn. We, we must get there before the Baptist church, church get there. Otherwise, we, they eat all the chicken. There's no chicken. I thought, I must hurry itaisha. up a service because of the, the chicken. I must hurry a service because of cuckoos. I didn't come here because of chicken. Holy Ghost want to move. Holy Spirit, you can't move today. Kuku, kuku, kuku. We need Aha. kuku. Si kuja hapa kwa ajili ya kuku na kwa hivyo romu takatifu wa tembe juu ya kuku. I get into this church. Nilijia kwa hile kanisa. It was so dead. Kwa sababu ilikuwa ime kufa. That while I was preaching. Nilipo kuwa na hubi. A man on the back row. Mtu wa kiwa kule nyuma. Had a heart attack and died. Ali angushwa na msuko wa moe. And they carried out ten rows of people before they found the right person. Na ili chukua 